Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today and welcome to the conference. My name is Vince Musel. I'm the OpenRN librarian at Chippewa Valley Technical College, which is in beautiful Eau Claire, Wisconsin. In today's presentation, Transforming Nursing Education with OER, we're going to talk about um, one of the Department of Education's Open Textbook Pilot Grants that we were awarded in 2019. Our agenda for today, we're going to provide a high-level overview of the OpenRN grant project. We're going to discuss advocacy and education strategies. We're going to describe the development and review processes used to create the textbooks. And we're going to explain how to access the OpenRN textbooks and the associated H5P activities. So just a little background on the OpenRN project. Um, one of our purposes for writing the grant originally was, as you see here, the price of textbooks, I know many of you know this, but has gone up exponentially over the past 30, 40 years. Um, so we knew that some of our students were struggling. We're a um, technical college, a two-year institution. Um, we have a lot of need-based students, and we knew they were struggling with purchasing their textbooks. We applied for one of the open textbook pilot grants um, very early in the process for the $5 million. Um, we weren't awarded, but we were backfilled two and a half million um, the following spring. Um, in the grant, um, we were charged with developing five open textbooks. Um, and the books are listed here. They're pharmacology, fundamentals, skills, mental health, and management. Um, we were also charged with creating 25 virtual reality scenarios. Um, we have, interestingly, over 300 developers nationwide working on this project. In Wisconsin, we anticipate 5,700 students um, that will be impacted, but already two years into the grant, we know that there's going to be much, much more than that as we see adoptions from all over the country coming in for some of our techs. All 16 of the Wisconsin Technical Colleges are involved, so the Wisconsin Technical Colleges aren't under one umbrella. We're more like a consortium in that we work together, but we're all separate entities. Um, and then we anticipate that in Wisconsin alone, this project will save Wisconsin students one and a half million dollars. All right, so the question is, how do we do this? What is our framework for this? So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have an existing consortium already developed, and that's the Wisconsin Technical College System. Um, we use statewide nursing curriculum. And this is communicated with on a semi-annual basis at the nursing dean meeting, um, which is led at a statewide level. Um, and this project is led by CVTC, uh, but we also have assistance from three other lead colleges um, from Wisconsin that were included in this grant as well. Faculty are a part of this project from all over Wisconsin and all over the country on a number of different levels, including developer, in which they actually help to write the content. Contributor, in which they might contribute in another way, perhaps images or um, providing backup to the developers. And then we have reviewers, which are the peer reviewers. And all of these participants are paid on a stipend basis. And they have a rubric to follow when reviewing. And they use hypothesis um, to kind of keep track of comments and feedback and so forth. All of this is done in Google Docs. We collaborate all in Google Docs, which I know many of you know, but it's a free tool um, that displays lifetime editing. So addressing the gaps. So the books that we selected were based on costs for high enrollment nursing courses. Um, so we knew those books that we selected. There's a lot of students in those particular courses. Again, first generation college students, um, low income, not being able to afford it. Um, so that's how we kind of selected the books. Um, we also knew that going into this project, there was a large gap um, on awareness of OER. So we developed um, what I call the OER 101 professional development course. Um, and this is a course um, meant to basically educate faculty and administrators on what OER is. Um, and we use the framework of who, what, where, when, why, and how um, at a very basic level for them to kind of understand what OER is and 
and how it might affect them and their students, and um, also some of the outcomes of OER. You know, we know that it relates to persistence, completion, graduation, retention, um, and of course, cost savings. The project has an advisory committee that identifies gaps in current trends. Um, so if there's something that's up and coming in the nursing field, um, the advisory committee shares about this. And the advisory committee is not only um, colleges or educators, it's also industry. So we see partners from clinics and hospitals um, from all over. And then we did a gap analysis for VR, uh, virtual reality, and um, basically we determined that um, a lot of the VR scenarios would be for soft skills, um, kind of students working with patients, um, kind of that soft skill customer service component of nursing. All right, promoting student success. So I mentioned textbooks are completely aligned with the nursing curriculum, and we really focus on the need to know content. We don't have a lot of fluff or other stuff in there that a lot of um, current purchase models have. We really focus on the need to know. Um, we get this out via the Pressbooks platform, and this is an ebook format, and there's multiple downloadable versions, or students can view it simply online. Um, we do have a print option, and that's offered through Xanadu. We know that about 60% of students prefer print, and 30% of rural Americans don't have broadband access. So we wanted to make sure that we can get a low-cost print version out there available as well. And the Nursing Pharmacology book, which is the first text, um, goes for around $40 for the print version. Um, of course, the online one is free. We also developed a sustainability fund for this. So printing through Xanadu, we um, have a small royalty involved in that, and it's $1 to $5 per print text. And the purpose of that is to simply go directly back into the book. So nursing is a field that needs to be updated rather frequently. So we want to make sure that we build a framework for us to be able to update um, this material and content as needed. So this fund is set aside for the purposes of making sure the text is current. Um, the text can also be accessed in LibreText. So LibreText is the original Department of Education um, Open Textbook Pilot Grant awardee. Um, and they are developing a platform to not only serve as a repository for OER, but also they're providing a service for OER to be remixed. So if you adopt one of these textbooks from the OpenRN project, and let's say you live in Nevada or California, and you have some different um, curriculum, you can remix it using that free tool in LibreText. So um, we haven't gotten there yet, but we do plan to assess this regularly by the semester to see how student grades work, retention, success, etc. So we're looking forward to seeing some of the results. We've seen some preliminary feedback from students and faculty. Um, the overwhelming majority highlight how great the book is, not only because of the cost, but also because of the content. Um, and then a faculty and student survey is included in the ebooks and H5P scenarios for feedback. Yeah, so as we mentioned, we use H5P in the Pressbooks version of the text. H5P is a free software to create online formative assessment activities, and it's really helpful for remote learning, um, especially during COVID. We were able to use flashcards, um, quiz questions, hotspots, etc., cetera, um, for that immediate formative assessment um, learning activities. Uh, H5P allows for branching scenarios, which are used to create the virtual simulations. Um, so if you're thinking of choose your own adventure, um, that's kind of how the H5P activities are built, or some of them are. And then we're looking at um, our VR to virtual simulation in response to COVID. Um, we have the ability to um, be totally immersive, which requires the Oculus Rift headset or equivalent. Um, but then we're also looking at being able to broadcast these scenarios using Zoom. So if one student participates in it or faculty, other students can walk through that scenario or be in that environment with them, not in the 3D element, but with the 2D um, visualization. 
In the VR, we'll be using H5P branching scenarios in some component as well. Um, we have, we've created 12 so far using media from our previous Arise grant project. Um, and now we're going to incorporate VR scenes with decision points. Um, so you can see the consequences of incorrect decisions. It's an important um, component of gaming theory. All right, so it's a big project. What are some lessons that we've learned? Um, one of them is make sure that you have set aside milestones or um, some key activities and make sure that you celebrate. So when a book was finished, we had a celebration. When we finished a chapter, we recognized it. Um, and then as we did that, we realized how much more attainable our work was for future work. Key personnel are key. Um, so key personnel includes your subject matter expert, project director, OER librarians, or just librarians that help curate, um, create attributions and verify images, um, instructional designers, who is also a subject matter expert, um, an instructional technologist, we've had a copy editor, and then a grants accounting specialist, someone that's familiar with um, grants much more so than the average person is, have all been extremely helpful with the project. We also learned that having a good workflow is extremely important for a project of this scope. So we use um, a project management software called Basecamp. Um, we also use Google Docs to kind of collaborate um, just to make sure that we're all on the same page and that everyone gets to the part of the project that they need to when they need to. Um, faculty, we use the guided inquiry process. So if you look to the right here, you can kind of see this model of the information search process. So we found that a lot of faculty felt very, how do I say it, unsure of themselves, almost like an imposter syndrome. They don't view themselves as the experts in the nursing field, but we know that they are. In Wisconsin, the nurse educators not only have experience as being nurses in the field, they also have the experience of educating. So they really are the experts and we had to walk them through this. And you can kind of see how the search information search process kind of highlights those uncertainties and those feelings. Um, and then ultimately, faculty are really excited about it when they get to this um, presentation component. It's just kind of getting them to that point. We've also used um, Rebus' Guide to Publishing to help with the project, which has been very helpful. Um, that's out there available freely. And then we learned um, sustainability. That's a big thing, you know. Every time we talk about OER, we hear the question, what about sustainability? How are we going to support this in the future? What if something changes? What's my role? Is it going to be so much work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We hear this all the time. So as I mentioned earlier, we did build a framework for sustainability. Um, using some Xanadu funds, but really that ultimately lies with the faculty um, that are using the text. And I suspect OpenRN will have a huge role in the future as well, although we are only grant funded at this point. All right, so where do we find these resources? We talked uh, about a few different resources. So I guess the place where I would start would be the OpenRN website. And I'll share that website at the end of the presentation. But really, that'll have a link to all of our textbooks in the OpenRN project. And you can also sign up to get on a mailing list um, that updates quarterly with where we are at with the grant project. So you can see on top of that. We also, you are also able to sign up as a peer reviewer by visiting the OpenRN website. You'll see the field right on the page there that'll walk you through it um, to be able to sign up for that. Um, so most of the content you'll find on there. Um, the Nursing Pharmacology book, as I mentioned, and all of our other OER textbooks that are available are available in Pressbooks. Um, again, the link is from the OpenRN website. H5P, you can access to through our OpenRN website as well. That's where many of our activities are at this point. Um, I did mention LibreText would be a great tool for either linking the content directly into your course or remixing the content to meet any specific criteria or curriculum you might have, as well as customizing it to making it your own. And then Xanadu um, offers the print version, which again, you can 
likely connect with your bookstore on connecting on connecting students with the resource. I should also mention also on the OpenRN page, if you or a colleague you know would like to learn more about OER in general, um, they can sign up for the OER 101 course that we mentioned earlier. It is a free course for them to enroll in and they can um, sign up or sign a friend up and join us and it only takes about 15 hours so definitely feel free to pass that along. All right that's all we have for today. Again if you want to sign up to receive quarterly grant reports or updates or to become a reviewer visit our website cvtc.edu slash openrn. Um, otherwise, um, I welcome any questions be sent directly to me at vmusel at cvtc.edu, or you can submit the question form right on the website. All right, everybody, thanks so much. Keep up the great work you're all doing for student affordability and success. Have a great conference.